<laughs> good morning, good morning. We are here on October the 2nd of 2019, a wonderful Wednesday. Reading in Isaiah 66, 1 through 24. Uh, reading today's scriptures, um, for me, uh, was a reminder of who God is. I mean, I love it when he does this. It happened in Job. We got to read when you know, go all the way through the book of Job and all of the struggles that Job had and went through how his friends treated him, what his friends all had to say, and down to then it was God's turn, and God spoke. And he kind of spoke to him similar to the way this starts out today in that, where were you, Job, when I hung the moon? Where were you when I put the stars in the sky? Well, today it's heaven is my throne, Isaiah 66, 1. God bless you. And the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that? Could you build me such a resting place? And I just think it's just a, a good, good, good reminder for us to stop every once in a while and just say, wow, you know, look at those trees. I mean, I still, I'm still, and I have been ever since I was a child, I guess. I don't know if any of you guys ever experienced this in school, but especially this time of the year, it's fall. And getting close to fall and the leaves start falling and did your teacher ever have you bring a, a brown leaf to school you know and and then or even a green leaf I mean there's I can remember doing a green leaf too and looking under a microscope at it and seeing all the intricate especially in the green leaf because in the green leaf the little veins that carries the the water and the nutrients um, are still intact in, in that leaf you know, and then to go from that green leaf with all of that water and all that life in it to then a dead leaf that's fallen off and it's so brittle and it'll break so easy. And to, to stop and think about what did it take <coughs> to create that? I mean, what, what did it take? You know, he goes on to say, my hands have made both heaven and earth and they and everything in them are mine. Everything in them are mine. I the Lord have spoken and um, you know there's just so much packed in that but first and foremost that he's God and that he did create everything that we see and and that's what it says <clears throat> my hands have made both heaven and earth <coughs> excuse me my hands God says has made both heaven and earth and everything in them are mine. And so, again, this table is mine. This iPad that we record on, this computer that we record on, the intricacies, remembering back when I'm old enough to remember the mainframes. And, you know, a mainframe at one point in time to do what these two pieces of technology are doing would have taken up the space of our whole two living rooms and dining room here at one point in time and how that kind of massive equipment is boiled down to a little teeny tiny chip inside of this is this a mini iPad is that what that's called and this Mac computer I mean little teeny tiny chips you know all of that technology came from God we're, we're not capable of it man in and of ourselves are not capable of it unless we think we are then Philippians <laughs> will set us straight Paul says I once thought these things were valuable but was valuable but now I consider them worthless because because of what Christ has done yes everything is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord for his sake I have discarded everything else counting it all garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law rather than become righteousness through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. You know, Paul's saying, you know, that he, he was a good uh, Sadducee. He, he lived his life according to the law. He worked hard. He, he did all the things that he thought made him 
a, a, a person in right standing with God until he met Jesus. And then all of those things he did under the law, he knew was just garbage. And even the things he's done since his encounter with Christ is but garbage compared to Christ and compared to just the ability to know Christ and become one with him. You know, same thing with, with, with what I'm saying about knowing who God is and how magnificent he is and, you know, not mentioning counting all the blessings for the things we have. I mean, in America, we have, we have clean drinking water any place you want to go in America. I mean, there's still countries out there that what they wouldn't give to just have one well that had, had good drinking water. My hands have made both heaven and earth, and they, and they and everything in them are mine. And all of a sudden, when you put God in the right perspective, it's like, oh, he's still God. With everything going on, he's still God. And then, I don't own anything. I, my work isn't worth anything unless I'm working unto him. If I'm working to get my own fame, if I'm working to get my own, you know, recognition, my own, if I'm working to get my own pay, it's not worth anything. But if I'm working to glorify him, boy, it takes on a whole different significance. I mean, even what we would be willing to do is different when we're doing it to glorify him instead of doing it because I got to have a job. I'm doing it because I want to buy a new car or I want to, I want to, not, you know, I'll, I'll do it to glorify him. And then if he wants me to have a new car, he'll provide it. If he wants me to drive a different car, I'll drive it. I, anyway, that that's what today's message spoke to me. Both the Isaiah and the Philippians, you know, there's so much encouragement in Philippians. I don't mean to say verse 12, <clears throat> Philippians 3, 12. Um... Yes, 3.12, so I just want to, because I know some of y'all follow along when I start reading. I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. I mean, if Paul says that, <laughs> with, where, where he was with his relationship with the Lord, then that ought to comfort you when you mess up. It, ought, it comforts me when I mess up. Because if Paul can say, I don't mean to say that I, Paul, have already achieved these things or that I, Paul, have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. Now, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, for I focus on this one thing, and this is, this is where it's all at. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Let all who are spiritually mature agree on these things. If you disagree on some point, I believe God will make it plain to you. But we must hold on to the progress we've already made. We're going to press on. We're going to let the things of the past be the things of the past. And we're going to press on, working towards the mark. Hmm. Yeah, on this wonderful Wednesday. I love y'all.